Hi. Good afternoon. I almost said morning. Welcome back to my channel. It's Mama Brooke here. Today I'm going to make oxtail. Jamaican oxtail. Yes, and before all you Jamaicans jump all over me, yes, Mama Brooke can cook some oxtail down. I'm also going to make some rice and peas. I'm not making my rice and peas from overnight soaking peas because I'm making a small batch. I'm not making a big old pot. It's just me in the house. I already got to figure out who I'm going to give this oxtail to. And I'm going to make some uh, fried dumpling, Johnny Cakes, because I like it like that, because I like dipping it into the gravy. I'm starting a, a really strict diet. Well, maybe I'm going to be able to eat everything. I'm starting that on Sunday, though, and I didn't do it Monday because... Everyone starts on Monday, right? So I thought, let me do it Sunday. So I got to eat this for two days as it is. Hmm. Yeah, but it's all good. Now, it's raining out today here in Toronto, so it's a perfect day to actually do some stewed oxtail because it's warm and cozy and sexy times in the house, and it won't be so hot, hot, hot cooking it. But I will run out now and get the scotch bonnets and come back in, and then I'll show you how to wash the meat, and I'll show you how I season it, and how I do everything. So stay tuned. Stay along with me. Come along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You're going to like this one. It's so good. Okay, guys, now you got to clean your meat. So I trimmed off the excess fat. It has a lot of fat on the sides, but you need that to when it's rendering down, right? And it's great for when it's braising. So this isn't too thick. I've seen a lot thicker. Um, I asked the butcher to cut it like that because that's the way I like it. And you can use vinegar or you can use uh, lemon or you can use both, whatever you want. This will probably get some seeds in it, but that's okay. Um, I'll pick them out later because I'm going to wash this two or three times. I'm probably only going to wash it twice because I had already trimmed the fat and rinsed it. So um, I'll probably just do it twice. But either way, I tell everyone to do it three times. So I use a whole lemon in this uh, when I do it and I just squeeze all the juice out first and then I use the lemon to wash my meat. So I like cold water for this guys. So what I do is I literally wash the meat. I'm not playing around. I mean, it doesn't hurt to wash it, right? A little bit of cold water in here and you'll see how clean it comes. Now mine's not going to be too dirty because I've already previously rinsed it before I froze it I washed it and I um, uh, trimmed the fat a little bit right so so I just do it this way each piece it actually makes the meat more tender anyways washing it right with the lemon lemon I, I like lemon more than vinegar don't know why but either one works just fine for cleaning it right so not judging anybody they use a different you know, lemon or vinegar, it doesn't really matter. I had to laugh, my little um, girlfriend, Jade, my little boo-boo, the five-year-old that I talk about all the time, she she really wants to be in one of my videos or tell everybody to like and subscribe. She's just a little doll. But she, I guess in one of my videos, I said, you know, I'm all, I have to get, I put a little bit of makeup on and look all pretty. Well, she had a bunch of makeup on and made a video with all kinds of makeup on. She's just such a cute little girl, right? You gotta love them when they're babies. Yeah, her heart's in the right place for sure. Okay, guys, so as you see, the water's a little milky. Just rinse that out and rinse it a few more times. Okay, so that's all I really do. I do it in cold water though. Keeps the meat nice and fresh not in hot it's not like you're giving yourself a bath or anything like that and i have one cutting board i use just for meat i'm sure a lot of people do that and then after i do this i'll clean my whole sink out whoops there goes a piece i'll clean my whole sink out oh another little piece of the tail but i had already bleached it before i did this guys so anyways that's basically all you have to do i'm going to rinse it one more time and in the interim I'm going to turn my video off and I'll prep for everything else. So I'll let you guys see how it, how it goes for the next step. Fresh time from the garden. What I need here is I like to use a, a tomato and a small carrot. I make my own greens, green seasoning. 
Now I use a, a meat tenderizer, um, about a tablespoon. I do a teaspoon of uh, garlic, a teaspoon of uh, paprika. I do a half a red pepper, half an onion. This isn't a huge pot, right guys? If it is, then you double it. Of course, a bell pepper. And then I do scallions, um, fresh thyme. I also use a little bit of browning. I don't always use that. I add butter beans at the end. Now I'm using a little bit of brown sugar to braise mine today here. And I'll use that. And then I use fresh garlic and fresh ginger and some pimento seeds. Now the olive oil is for when I'm doing, gonna braise it, I'll put that with a little bit of um, brown sugar in it. And that'll be my uh, braising. Okay, so I added my green sauce. I got a little bit excited there putting this all together. I'm not, I'm not one to measure anything ever, ever, ever. So this is a little difficult for me. I'm just going to throw that in. That's my seasonings. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw my greens in, my garlic, my pimento seeds. You can use the mortar and crush them if you like to. I don't really bother doing too much of that. That's ginger, fresh ginger. Just grate it. Okay. Of course, my pepper. My onions and my red peppers. You can use green peppers, whatever you want. I like the red. I'm not into green. Don't know what it is. And then, of course, a tomato and a carrot cut up. So what I do is I just put all that together, and then I just mix it up. Hold on. I need to grab a spoon. So I'm trying to be all organized here for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Now I'm going to mix this all up, and then I'll pick the meat out later after I've let it marinate for a couple hours, right? So just mix it in really, really good, guys. I would use my hands normally, but I'm trying to be, you know, all proper here with you people. Don't know why, because I'm not a proper girl. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oops. And just make sure it's all blended in really, really, really good, guys. And then just put a lid on it, put it back in the fridge for a couple hours. It's definitely not going to hurt it. I can add the browning sauce now if I want you to, which I guess I might as well just do it. Mix it all in there. I don't always use this either, guys. I'm not a, not a huge fan of it, but I thought a lot of people would probably like to see it nice and really brown. And I do like my oxtail really nice and brown as well. So just mix that up really, really, really good. And then just cover it up and put it in the refrigerator. I'm going to get my um, stuff ready to make rice and peas. And I'm going to make some uh, fried dumplings as well, guys, today. So let that all season it up. Look how brown it is already. Looks like it's cooked, right? No, I'm just kidding. It definitely doesn't look like it's cooked to me. Okay, guys. So I'll get back to you in a few minutes. As soon as I put this all away and clean up, do the little bit of dishes I have. And I'll put the rest of that ginger and don't want to waste any. And I'll get back to you really quick. Ciao. I shouldn't be using this metal thing on this beautiful pan, but... I am for two seconds. I need a better spoon for that. And I have my oxtail sitting over here. And what I'm going to do is just add a little at a time. Now, I always tell everyone, keep a, a pot of um, uh, water in the back burner because you're going to need it. Don't be putting cold water onto your oxtail when you start cooking it, guys. Now, a lot of people really caramelize this. I don't necessarily do that. I just put about a tablespoon of oil. I don't like it a lot because, like I said, the oxtail has tons of fat on it, so you don't really need it. So I'm just going to use a, an oxtail here to stir this up because I don't have a plastic uh, silicone spoon here with me. So I just add all that in, guys. Now I, I take the, the seasoning off, like the onion and everything. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I just didn't want it too high when I started because my camera's above it and I'm doing the best that I can with what I have guys I don't have uh, proper equipment I, I you know I'm not Martha Stewart here yet so we'll see how that goes one day one of Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg like to eat off scale together <laughs> what a combination that is eh I just find it so odd but, you know, it is what it is. But she seems so pretty. 
that maybe she's a really cool lady. I don't know. Oops, didn't mean to put the pepper in there. So I just want to brown this on both sides, guys. I'm going to throw a lid on it for a minute because I let it go in its own juices. Let it steam in its own juices. It's the best for it. And that's how I start this. So once that's all browned up, then you go from there and you can add all your food. So this is what's left in my bowl here, which I'm going to add water to. And then I'll dump that on top after it's all braised, okay? So we need to turn, I'm only really going to flip it once on each side. And then I'll add, and then I'll add the food in, the extra food. So there you go. Let that stew down for a little bit or braise for a little bit and I'll flip it over. Okay guys, I am going to take the lid off and flip them now. Look at that, aren't they looking good already? So I'm just gonna turn them and do the other side and then I'll add the the seasoning and the food in. I don't know why I'm calling it food, I guess. It's looking good though. So that's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna stop and do this without you watching because I'm holding the camera. I gotta be honest, right? But it's already looking really, really good. So I'll turn it to one side, let it cook for about another five minutes. And once that's all cooked down, I will add the, the onions and the, and the scallions and the peppers and all that into it. And then I'll add some hot water that I have on the back of the stove reserved. Okay, and I'll let you know how it goes from there. Probably see you in about three hours, because that's what it takes. Okay, it's been about uh, 15 minutes now. I've even did the sides and everything. It's looking really good it's in its own juices too. And now I'm going to dump in all the seasoning. So I'll just dump it all in at once. Pardon. And then I'll mix it in and I'll add some water to that. Again, use your kettle, guys, from the back. Always try to use your kettle because you don't want to put cold water on something that you're stewing down, okay? And then put the lid on. I just leave it on high for a little bit and then I turn it down to medium and I just let it stew down for about three hours. Ciao, see you in a bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring the notification bell and we'll go from there, guys. I know you want me to make some curried chicken and stuff too, right? Mm-hmm, sexy times. And every time you see it go down, just keep adding more water till the very end and then you make your gravy after that, okay guys? So I'm gonna put the lid back on. I'm gonna walk away from this, let it do its thing. And I'm gonna actually start making some Johnny cakes or fried dumpling, whatever you wanna call them. And we'll go from there and I have the rice and peas on the back burner over there. I just made a small pot today. We'll go there, ciao. Guys, I just added a little more water. Ooh, it's hot. It's looking really, really, really good. I won't add my butter beans in till the very end. The last like, you know, half an hour or so like that. Um, but this has been about 45 minutes stewing down now. I just topped it up and I'm gonna cover it again, leave it alone, walk away. I just rinsed my butter beans. I left them in the jar, but I rinsed them with cold water and then strained it, just easier that way. You can, you can soak your own butter beans too, I just don't bother. And like I said, for the kidney beans, for the rice and peas, yes, I usually do. Um, definitely, uh, I usually do make my own, but I'm, like I said, I just made a small pot and it's looking really good. I just checked it out too. So everything's coming along great. Just gonna go look after my fried dumplings now. Now, a lot of people like boiled dumplings. I only like boiled dumplings with stewed beef and um, goat. Other than that, I don't like a dark scale. I love a good fried dumpling though. Who doesn't? It's been about two hours and 15 minutes or so. I just added a touch more water. The meat's getting really nice and soft. It's looking really good. Now I rinsed uh, my butter beans off because they, they're canned and I drained them. So I'm just gonna add them in now at this point. Okay, this is getting near the end. And that's my butter beans there. 
I took out uh, the thyme and the bay leaf already. The carrots and that are getting soft now and that will turn into gravy. It's looking really, really good. Now, I am gonna make the Johnny Cakes right now, but I, I hurt my rotator cuff. So I started thinking about this because, you know, it takes a lot of pressure to knead this. So I'm going to, I don't have a KitchenAid, but I have a food processor. So I'm going to try making it in that and I'll let you guys follow along. Um, but I think I'm going to post that as a separate video. But I thought I'd let you know that I am going to make that and I'll show you when this is all done and I'll plate you up. Ciao. No joke. It's amazing. The meat is falling off the bone wish she could be here to taste it it's so good oh love it